If you can dodge a wrench, you can dodge a ball. All right. Uh, time for another stream. So uh, I'm really excited um, this time because um, there is a Kickstarter going on for a game called The Grand Carnival. Um, I actually kickstarted a while ago, but they're doing an expansion. So I thought maybe it was time that we open it and play it instead of mucking around with dodgeball like we do every week. Hi, Al. Uh-huh. Hello. You, you want to play Grand Carnival? What? It's a carnival game. Come on, you love carnies. They have small hands and they smell like cabbage. Do they also organize... Uh... BGG things? I don't know. Um, um, they organize PGL things. Yeah. Um, that is not what we're here for, I don't think. I okay. think we're here. I know you're not going to like this, but I think we're here for the dodgeballs. All right. So welcome, everyone, to Season 9. If we have time after, can we try it? If we have time, sure. Why not? All right. We are starting later, though. I'm, I'm just telling you right now. From like this down is like pajama time. I was gonna say pajamas. You turn into a pumpkin pretty soon, don't you? Well, I am pretty pumpkin shaped. So welcome everyone to season nine, episode three of Sweaty Balls. No one can resist our balls. Um, and it's been it's been a little it's been a hot minute since the round actually ended because, of course, there was Canada Day, which obviously was very important on everyone's radar. And then some traitor day, I think, that, that you guys are quite f fond of or something, throwing tea around. I don't know. Yeah, we throw explosions around now. Oh, goodness, no, I know, right? Anyway, uh, let's get started. So we're going to go through our usual nonsense. We've got, uh, we've got the standings as we go into round three before we have a little sip of tea, Al. So as we go into round three, we've got Catch in a Box and Dodger Trebek up at the top there, both unbeaten, both with two wins, zero losses, just winning. Uh, then we've got a whole tranche of, of one ones. Um, we've got Dodge Meisters, Making Dodges, Debbie Dodgers, Dodgy S Pumpkins, Motivational Catchers, A Catch at the Roxbury, More Cowball, fixed from last week. Uh, and then at the bottom, strongest teams holding everyone up, Wild and Crazy Throws and Chip and Balls, who, if I remember rightly, face off this week. Um, so that could be a very interesting one indeed, Al. Yeah. Um, but before we go any further, I know it's your favorite time. It's, I love this. It's, tea it's time. the only reason I tune it's in. It's the only reason you tune in. You cannot a jot for any of the rest of the nonsense. It's all about the tea. So let's dive into that, shall we? Um, so, uh, apparently, Al, uh, I'm so old, I've got to shampoo my ear hair. Uh, that, that came in this week. Uh, that I sounds accurate. I don't know where that came from, but, uh, there we go. Um, and substitutes, Al, this week, were making immediate friends in team chat by crap talking their teammates. Um, you know, one of the, one of the team players was kind of saying, well, the, the race is going like this. They've got a mission. Oh, now they've got two missions and... I think uh, this substitute responded with, we've, we've got a nervous Nelly here. <laughs> um, followed that up uh, as, as the person said, right, I'm going to send this person a, a Trebek challenge. I was like, ooh, I'm shaking. It was a Golden Girls uh, gif, which I quite enjoyed. Um, also, news just in, Al. Uh, Juan licks balls. You heard it here first. Um, Wait a minute. So I have a question though. He okay. licks other people's or his own? Because if it's his own, I am super impressed with that kind of flexibility. Like that's the kind of stuff I only see my cat being able to do. <laughs> cats and dogs, man. Cats and dogs. Um, yeah. I don't think the gif in question was very specific. It was basically just uh, ownership slash possession via licking. Oh, so. I, I don't know, really. But uh, anyway, Juan Licks Balls, you heard it here first. Got um, it. Apparently, uh, Juan and Chaz were having, or at least Juan was planning to have a romantic evening, a romantic European evening specifically uh, with Chaz. Um, 
apparently teammates weren't too happy with that and revealed that they were in fact uh, effectively lambdas in a skin suit, maybe a uh, a perverted bending unit from Futurama, um, mm. as as they couldn't couldn't pull out their full uh, programming uh, on on the humans. So I'm not quite sure what was trying to be achieved there, but it just made that person look really weird. However, mm. Al, my this is my favorite. This is my absolute favorite tea of the week. Uh, first round pick. Ninja Nin, a.k.a. Lucas Baxter. Uh, you, you know this is going to go well for him when you call him first round pick. First Ninja round Nin. pick, Ninja Nin, uh, called his, their opponents this week, the Chippin Bulls, immediately after the draft in team chat, one of the weaker teams. Then, when That's playing them, Al, and this, spoilers, but when playing them, lost his race via concession, he got a ball handed to him by a teammate, uh, threw it, and promptly lost it. Then he got thrown at and hit and proceeded to spend the rest of the game on the bench whilst his team got picked off one by one. So, well done, Lucas Baxter. That was amazing. That's... That is excellent. That's why at the end of the draft, I say every team is good. Absolutely. So that way, none of them target me like that. <laughs> none of them can hit you in the face with the hubris of your own uh, utterings. Yeah. So this was, uh, yeah, that was that was amazing. I love that. Uh, so thank you for that uh, secret little tea, Bussy. Um, we we look forward to more of those sips of tea as we go in. So. Um, we're going to hit the courts, Al, but we're going to start with the least exciting game first and work forwards to the most exciting game, uh, which actually means that we're starting with your game, Al. Sorry about oh. that. Sorry about that. Um, might be news to you, but uh, here we are <laughs> <laughs> on your match. So this one began, Al, with a fairly sizable ball advantage uh, to you, uh, not you personally necessarily, but your team. Um, you were 5-2 in the, the race winnings. Um, now, Agent Sato went on the rampage immediately, taking out uh, your friend and mine and friend of the show, uh, Jonathan Bishop Darth Binkley, uh, mm -hmm. before then uh, going on to take Rip out immediately after Rip had failed to uh, annihilate Patriarch. Bit of a lull in proceedings then. Uh, Wheels dodged Risker, Patriarch dodged Rip Zombie Ball before you eliminate Dusto, uh, and Yarboa strikes back to eliminate um, Risker. A couple dodges then from from the ladies. Club Missy Imam, Imam can't hit Deanna B. Agent C, sorry, Agent Sato can't take DG three. DG three dodges Agent Sato. You miss Yarbs, and then Imam takes out Deanna B finally at the second time of asking. A few more dodges from Yarboa, clever Missy as they dodge uh, yours and DG3's balls. Uh, before Markbot catches and eliminates Wheels, uh, which is considering his one man dismantling in the last round is a, a, a true scalp to take. Um, Yarboa takes out Elizabeth. Um, and then, like, it's it's starting to look somewhat one-sided at this stage. Um, Clever Missy misses DG3, who dodges Patriarch, who misses Patriarch, before, obviously feeling confident and throwing again at Patriarch, gets caught by Mr. 215 himself. Um, Imam misses Yarboa, and then finally you take out Yarbs to clinch uh, the match. So, game-winning hit, Mr. Silent Al. Who is your mm -hmm. MVP? Uh, I, <laughs> we were looking at this, and <laughs> the fun thing is me and Agent Seto both had the exact same stats for the week. Like, the only exact, difference is... Exactly, wasn't it? It was exactly the exactly. same. Exactly. Like exactly same, throw, same, same number hit, of same, hits, catch, same win rate same win rate same amount of races won it was uncanny so the question is do we give the mvp to the person that got the first hit or the person that got the last hit or who's um, the better librarian like is that well, the deciding factor 
being that I'm finished with my master's in library <laughs> science and still working on it. However, you also know how much I hate giving the MVP to myself. It's true. So uh, right there, uh, Agent Seto wins the uh, wins the race there. So also, I mean, I have to give it up to him. While I may have gotten the finishing hit, he started off the game so strong and just, you know, the first, the first, like before I even got one throw off, he had taken out two players and just sort of demoralized the other team. So you got to give it to Seto. Yeah, I think that was a really, a really great way to start the match there. So congratulations to Agent Sato, MVP of Court 5. Uh, so as we move to Court 4, we got Dodgy S Pumpkins against Dodge Micers, Dodge Meisters making dodges. Uh, this, I believe, was a fairly um, speedy affair, Alan. I don't think there was a lot of throws in this one. This might have to go to the commissioner to see if it's the, the quickest game. I'm not sure it is the quickest game, but it was fairly fast. Um, a fairly balanced beginning um, as the Dodge Meisters start with four of the race balls. Um, but what happens next is a bit ugly. Um, Cyberduck manages to dodge simply Steph before uh, simply Steph catches his return ball, eliminating uh, Hair Duck from proceedings. Seabus Ripper takes out his wife, um, Bad Wolf falling to the uh, the absolute monster that is Michael Matthews. Before Bork and Beans takes out Captain Jester, uh, Compton avoids Bad Wolf zombie ball before Seabus Ripper strikes again and takes away our fairy uh, favorite Harry a Yeti. Um, Jace ascended dodges the attentions of Simply Steph before Seabus Ripper strikes again and takes out Cory Bear 88. So arguably one of the uh, the strongest chances of a, a revival there by the Pumpkins. Rollin' Par catches and eliminates Jester 204 for the double tap. Um, and then we move down a couple of dodges with Jace and MTG in real life avoiding the attentions of Compton and Dion Lunsford before Dion Lunsford catches... And eliminates Kerry, uh, MTG, going down there. Jace strikes against Compton uh, for a, a rare hit back there before Dion Lunsford rubs Jace's face in the base and takes him out with a hit. Uh, Kamas catches uh, MTG and revives Compton P. Uh, and then it's all down to uh, Jace eliminating simply Steph um, in, a, in a final kind of pyrrhic zombie ball and the game is just done uh, a total of uh in terms of non-race balls we've got 21 non-race balls there al um and an absolute bloodbath the game going to dodge meisters making dodges in a very very one-sided affair yeah uh, i mean give it up to jace he was the sort of bright spot on his team absolutely that yeah lasted longer than anyone else i think if if you look at and it's a shame actually his team didn't win if you look at jace's performances this season i think um he's oh, had he three is, really good games if you want to talk about someone who's just made an absolute leap from the previous season it's mm -hmm. got to be jace he's he's had some really great performances unfortunately his team didn't win so he's not up for mvp yeah he can't be even even though he might well be close to or above 60 percent in all of his games his team didn't win yeah. so can't be mvp uh but uh whose team did win and who is the mvp al uh we gotta give it to captain ripper um he Dominant he led he led from the front. Uh, he got three hits. He got his race win. He had a hundred percent win percentage. He was just four for four, well, three for three on offense. I mean, and his fourth win was his race win. He was just he was perfect. Yeah, yeah. It's a it's a really good performance by by the bus there. He parked it and he made uh, he made his case. It was a, a great game. So well done to C bus and congratulations to Dodge Meisters to take. Uh, to take another win there. We move on to court three. Uh, ah, yes. The hubris of Lucas. Uh, wild and crazy throws <laughs> against the Chippen ballers. So um, this game was, and I, I know some people are going to be shocked and horrified by this, Al. This game was not fast. 
Um, it started off with uh, a ball, strong ball advantage to Wilding Crazy Throws with five five balls landing in their court. None, of course, landing in the lap of Ninjanin, as we already learned in the T section. But um, the game begins with Captain Kronos eliminating Zim 108, setting his stall out there to uh, really punish his opponents before Lady Stacy takes out Dizilla, the, uh, I believe, one one might say the culpable party in previous memes. Um, it then it then goes to uh, an Agent C13 miss of Royal Lance uh, before Royal Lance punishes that miss by taking out Baggio 10, uh, your your friend and ex teammate and mine, before Lady Stacy uh, again strikes, eliminating Jonna Ann from from the game. Uh, really early strike there. A JL dodges Guianos and misses Guianos before finally bagging a Guiano. Simon Toft getting taken out on the third interchange between those two. Uh, Darklighter immediately catching and eliminating Penguin Army. Always an important scalp there um, to take out. And, and I remember a couple seasons ago, I think, when Corey Bear drafted him out, he always said, like, you, you can't catch and not eliminate penguin army you gotta you gotta take it oh, yeah. when you get the opportunity so um dark light are doing the business there agent c13 dodging jl before darth chronos catches and eliminates your boy tim the the agent um and taking him out and right now al if my maths is correct it's something like five against two um but we've got a couple of catches and revives coming up royal lance catches lady stacy reviving dieseler before Lady Stacy catches Darklighter reviving Zim. Uh, Lady Stacy then takes out Darth Kronos to try and kind of level the playing field a bit more. Um, and Zim apparently goes on, I don't know whether he threw all these balls at once or played faster than a speed demon, but he dodged JL, then missed Royal Lance twice, finally eliminated Royal Lance, and then missed Darklighter, uh, whilst Darklighter then dodged another ball from Zim, like six or seven balls from Zim all in a row. Um, Dizilla dodged the last one from Zim um, before JL then dodges an engine in throw. That's, uh, for those of you checking in, that's an engine in losing mm -hmm. the ball he was passed, uh, handed to him by a teammate. Good job. Good job, Lucas. Um, then Zim, Zim and Dark like to exchange a couple more balls. Um, Darth Kronos eliminates an engine in. Uh, Sending him early early shower for, for the boy Baxter um, before Zim eliminates Dizilla, who'd been revived, of course. Um, we've got Darklighter dodging Zim, Zim dodging Darklighter, Darklighter finally taking Zim out. A pretty pretty strong rearguard action from Zim having been revived by Lady Stacy. Um, JL, though, catching Zim on his way out, his zombie ball reviving Jonna Ann, and Lady Stacy uh, and Darklighter putting this match to bed. As Lady Stacy eliminates Vorazori and Darklighter catches and eliminates Lady Stacy to wrap that win up. Whew. That was double the amount of balls in from the last game, Al. Yeah. Um, tough to pick an MVP, and I think on any other day. It, well, and we're sort of seeing the same thing here. We have on the losing team, we have one person who gave an absolutely excellent performance in lady stacy i mean she she put on a clinic oh yeah however the other team was just way more well balanced you have three four people who legitimately could be mvp for their team so you have just a really well balanced team of a bunch of players versus one player who just went off for the the week and when when you have that situation it's the team with the the more balanced attack uh yeah. that's gonna win it so uh this week like i said we got three four people um there were three there were, there were some really good performances right there were i mean darth chronos jl dark lighter royal lance they all they all uh were contenders but i think i'm gonna go for dark lighter just because he got two critical catches there and i mean yeah. to get two catches in a match that's that's pretty, pretty good. That's a good thing. Uh, plus, you got a hit. I mean, you, you throw a hit on there with it, and uh, yeah. The, so I, I got to give it to to Dark Lighter. Yeah, I, that's that's a good shout, and uh, well, well done, Ricard. A great performance as always from him. 
always a always a tough competitor. Um, so we're going to move on to court two, Debbie Dodgers versus Moore Cowball. Um, and this was this was my match. Um, yeah. always, apparently, way more exciting than mine. Uh, apparently, way more exciting than yours. Um, there was a lot of smack talk going on in this game, um, as as is always when when you come up against old teammates. And Tuna Slap always one of my favorite opponents to play, but also one of my kind of hated opponents to play because he's such a tough cookie. But anyway, um, race balls fairly evenly split. Um, Sturrock, Tats, CJK, and Poop Deck taking it for Cowball. 4-3 to three over Tuna Slap, Starmark, and Thestral. Uh, game begins immediately by Sturrock just taking Treadwell out of the game. Obviously going for a kind of um, a Commonwealth approach, taking out, uh, taking out the down-unders as Treadwell is ruthlessly benched. Um, Fire Driller trying to take out Ballsy, going straight for the Tuna, uh, Al, with his first ball. Uh, however... Oh, sorry, that was Tuna going for Fire Driller. My apologies. Um, fails to take out the German. Starmark dodging CJK. And Colo and Tats involved in misses with Thestral and uh, M. Colo again. I dodge Starmark before Fire Driller takes out Slavic. Um, and Starmark, who's quite a flirt, actually, in chat. If you're, if you're in a <laughs> game with Starmark, you've got to watch yourself because he's... It really doesn't matter. Married, unmarried, male, female, like he's he's got the lines, Al. So watch yourself when you play that man. He's uh he's a sweet talker. Um, he misses CJK and he dodges Ancolo's reverse ball, but uh, Poop Deck catches and eliminates him. Not smooth enough to get around Captain Poop, um, and she then goes on to take out the Wolfhound in, in a, a quick one-two volley. Um, Fire Driller dodging Starmark Zombie Ball before eliminating Marauder Mo, and all of a sudden, Al, it's seven on two. Surely, mm -hmm. an easy win in the offing. Um, however, I miss Tuna, having been told to go after him by my captain, but Thestral caught and eliminated Sturrock. Uh, Tuna Slap dodged my ball again, uh, because I do what I'm told. Um, and then... Thestral misses CJK, uh, and CJK dodges a return from Thestral. Poop Deck dodges Thestral before Tuna Slap takes out Fire Driller, getting revenge uh, for the miss from earlier, uh, and then catches Fire Driller's reverse ball and revives Treadwell. Encolo dodges Tuna Slap. Thestral misses Poop Deck, but Thestral catches CJK and revives Slavic before Encolo catches Treadwell and revives Sturrock. So Tatiana dodges Slavic, and I eliminate Tuna Slap um, in what can only be described as a really nice hand. Um, Thestral takes out Captain Poop Deck. Slavic catches Mkolo, reviving Starmark. I take out Treadwell. Sturrock takes out Slavic, and CJK dodges Thestral, who's on a rampage. Um, Slavic eliminates Mkolo, uh, much to her delight. Um, Starmark dodges my throw and then eliminates Tatiana, dodging Tatiana's zombie ball, uh, misses CJK and Sturrock before Sturrock gets Starmark in the reverse ball, but Starmark with his zombie ball takes out Sturrock, just death flying everywhere. Um, CJK catches Starmark's ball, reviving Fire Driller, then Thestral takes out me, and I with my zombie ball take out Thestral. Uh, Thestral eliminates CJK, but it's too late because she didn't have enough balls to target everybody. If she'd had one more ball out, this could well mm. have gone to a race off because she was utterly ruthless. Um, and we just we just squeak by in a game that looked all one way and basically mostly because of Thestral turned into an almost reverse. A uh, really tense game. Lots of good chat and smack, uh, and and you know, GG to uh, to the the Dodgers. Mm -hmm. wah, wah. MVP. Uh, huh. see again, we have one team that had. I mean, we had some good performances on the other team, but mm -hmm. I mean, by far and away, Thestral was carrying that team. Absolutely, um, for, yeah. Your team. Where there's, I mean, an argument could be made for nearly any player on your team. That was some good performances. Yeah. There, yeah, everybody put in a good performance. Um, 
but there was no one like there wasn't like one obvious pick i guess is what i'm saying you all played really really well yeah um so because of that and it's so close um you're on the team i'm gonna let you pick the mvp for your team because it's so close i can't pick it (laughs) stitch up merchant well i'm gonna give it um i'm gonna give it to starrick he had three hits he had a really good win percentage. He won his race ball, um, and and the lad did really, really well. Um, maybe right. that maybe that Capoeira skills coming into play. Maybe. The, um, now now that you said that, I'm gonna have to take it away because Tatiana specifically said to give it to Fire Driller instead. Okay, sure. No, I'm you're the boss. I'm kidding. <laughs> no, I mean I'm Robert. Kidding. Robert had a good game. He had two hits. Robert, um, no. Uh, but it's it everybody had hits. a good game. There was no, yeah. I think Sturrock did a great job. He had three hits. He had a race win. That's that 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 is a any other game, you know, three three eliminations like that. That's awesome. Yeah, he, of course, give it to Sturrock. I don't good... want to I don't want to diminish his performance by putting you on the spot or <laughs> having Tatiana take it away from him. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. But I would just like to point out Tatiana is also on your team. And so she's going to have to answer to him in chat when she said to give it to someone else. Well, I mean, she's going to have to accept that at some point she might win an MVP herself and we're not going to give it away because she tells us to. So <laughs> tough luck, Tats. <laughs> no, we'll, we'll wait for Super Grandma to take it away from her. Absolutely. Always a winning ploy by, uh, by, by that one. So on to court one, the most, arguably, exciting game of the round. Uh, oh, is, yeah. Uh, oh, have I lost it? You know what? Here we go. Is that? No. Apparently, I closed the wrong sheet uh, with my L chart when I did that. Always, always top quality production on uh, on this show. Uh, let's dodge it. Pumpkin. Is this where we like cut to a commercial and tell everyone to go to the lobby and get themselves <laughs> a snack? That's right. Yeah, it's uh, the rock suck. By the way, if you haven't been. If you haven't been tuning in to um, Cranky's names for these matches, some of them are just oh, the names amazing. are amazing, absolutely astoundingly good. Um, so this one, Al, uh, let's let's preface everyone. Once we get past the race balls, I think we've got about 50, 50 balls to enjoy. Yeah, um, really long game. So. Catch, catch at the Rossbury, take the, the line share of the race balls was 4-3. Um, Acox and Juan Carlos dodge and miss Serafina and Super Grandma themselves before Nautical Stew gets things rolling by catching and eliminating Super Substitute and all-round, apparently, uh, like, quaking your boots opponent, Drew the Rat. Um, so Drew the Rat, being a, being a slayer last season, came in and did well to start this season, but gone uh with the first first elimination of the game to nautical stew um we've got a bunch more dodges coming up next super grandma chasmo osmosis brent um all dodging the respective balls that came at them from Juan carlos osmosis brent super grandma chasmo misses osmosis brent before bahamut 619 uh gets revenge and eliminates sarah t for the uh for the looking looking like he was going to lose the race ball uh, nautical stew eliminates acox Acox eliminates Serafina. Cisco Alvarez catches Nautical Stew, reviving Drew the Rat. Hopefully he doesn't regret that play later. Um, before Cisco Alvarez then goes on to eliminate Cranky Day. Uh, so a fairly a fairly kind of bloody passage of play there. Um, Osmosis Brent dodges Chasmo. Stew dodges Drew the Rat. And then Osmosis Brent eliminates Bahamut 619. And Nautical Stew eliminates Drew the Rat again. So... Maybe maybe reviving off that catch, not the best choice. Uh, one Carlos dodges Cisco before eliminating him. Bahamut eliminates Brent. Chasmo catches Brent, reviving Acox 89. Uh, Sethestral dodges Super Grandma Nautical Stew eliminates. Whew, that's another one. Acox 89. Chasmo eliminates Nautical Stew, making sure that doesn't carry on, because that would have been a lot of nonsense. Um, and Chasmo misses one Carlos. The, there's the, the first clue of what's going to happen recovers ball one uh chasmo dodges one carlos um before getting that ball 
Bruiser catches and eliminates the Thestral. Uh, Chasmo, again, misses Juan Carlos before Juan Carlos misses Bruiser. The Seth, the, 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 Sir Thestral eliminates Super Grandma. Uh, Chasmo dodges Juan Carlos. Juan Carlos eliminates Bruiser, not having any trouble missing uh, other people on the teams before Juan Carlos and Chasmo now spend, um, and I think this is a further one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Oh, I can't even count that high, Al. Basically, this was a passage of play that was absolutely nuts. There were probably 10 balls thrown on top of everything else that's happened in this game. And there were only two results that mattered. Everything else was a dodge or a miss. And they hit each other. And they dodged every single other ball they threw at each other. It was an insane passage of play between these two. I think we saw something similar between Cyberduck and Jester 204 last season, maybe. Mm -hmm. um, but but this was bonkers. Um, and so the with only those... thing they did was succeed in killing their win percentage for the week. Well, you, you say that, but I mean, it wasn't... Oh, I mean, I'm not saying like each of them had a winning win percentage. Yeah, yeah. For the week, but it, it would have been much higher if they hadn't been thrown. It would have been at much higher. Yeah, yeah before yeah. those 16 games. <laughs> um, and so the long and the short of it, Al, is that um, they eliminate each other to take us to a race off. Uh, is that the first one this season? I think. Uh, I believe so. Yeah. So we begin. Uh, with Super Grandma taking the ball off Osmosis Brent, uh, really embarrassing the, the Roxbury captain there, taking a 1 0 lead. And Cisco Alvarez robbing Nautical Stew of, of that race ball. It's now 2 0 to. Uh... Who are we even playing here? That's right, Dodge at Trebek. 2 0. However. Serafina rallies the troops by, by taking the Bahamut race ball. Juan Carlos, his second race win of the game, takes Bruiser's ball. Sir Thestral, they're now two all. Sir Thestral takes Acox's ball. That's 3-2. Cranky wins his race with Drew the Rat. That's 4-2. And finally, Chasmo wins his race ball, but it doesn't matter because that deciding four has already been claimed. And what a catch at the Roxbury, winning an absolute thriller by race off. Yeah, that was, it was a, it was an amazing game. I got to, I got to sort of oversee the race off at the end because Cranky is involved in one of the teams. And so he didn't want to be, uh, involved in much, as much in the race off, so there wasn't any sort of idea of collusion, uh, or at least that's what he said. In reality, I'm pretty sure he just wanted to watch the finale of Stranger Things and didn't want to be bothered. Uh, <laughs> I mean, it was very long, right? It's, one of those two it's like four and a half hours of episode to watch, so I can yeah, see how that I would know. happen. But uh, anyway, it was it was a really it was a really close match. It was a really great and to a close match um some really great performances in there too i mean on the losing team you had super grandma gave a great performance cisco gave a great performance uh bruiser who was a fill-in for this week you know put in some work and then of course chasmo oh. i mean chasmo not only led his team but also his captain was on vacation. He stepped in to be the captain for the week for his team That's and right. just absolutely led uh, and tried his hardest. Um, and it was just tough. They just, they, they ran into, um, they pretty much it ran into, I mean, the other team, not, nothing against Sir Thestral or Nautical Stew, who both gave really great performances as well. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, but it's the one and only. I mean, he he was the MVP. He he brought this game home. Um, I mean, 
And when he played 24 three hits. matches to start with. Yeah, 24 games, three hits, 63% win percentage. And most importantly, he won both of his races. He won his race at the beginning and he won his race at the end. And that's a 63% win percentage, bearing in mind that more than half his games were against Chasmo. Yeah. Who is a great player anyway. Um, yes. He threw 13 balls, Al. Yeah, it's just it's crazy. I mean, between Chasmo and Juan, they had ooh, nearly fifty game, like forty-seven games. Yeah, I mean, some I mean, of those are shared. Some of those are shared, but yes, they, they yeah. had a, a yeah. But I mean, that's it. that's more play than some whole teams. Well, some whole matches end in yeah. less games than they played. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that was a, a true, a true and epic feat of stamina by both of those players, and you know, right. taking it to a race off. I mean, big question now: Is he getting disciplined by Ass Clown anyway for for losing the game in his absence? I I don't think Jason has any place to complain. <laughs> uh, Chesmo did everything he could, absolutely above and beyond. So um, no, but uh, congratulations to Juan. Uh, his European evening, romancing Chasmo into the victory. Um, but yeah, an epic performance by, by Juan and, uh, and and well played to everyone in that game. That was a, a joy to behold. I remember like it during during that week, people were like, have you seen the have you seen the Juan and Chasmo games? I'm like, what's what's going on? And I looked at it, I was like, oh, this is bananas. And then it kept <laughs> happening. And then I think there, there was going. there was one point where Chasmo like launched all his balls. He's like, "I'm getting hit, y'all," and then <laughs> and then <laughs> Juan came back. and was like, "I'm really sorry. This isn't deliberate, but uh, Juan beats Chasmo by 29 points because <laughs> he just got a bad hand at the end of the match and couldn't and couldn't spin yeah. the, couldn't spin it for another turn. So yeah, it was just a crazy crazy game. Uh, so the standings at the end of that up on top. Uh, because now we have no one who's undefeated. Um, right. All those 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 two two O teams both lost. So we've got Dodge Meisters making dodges up at the top with the breakers. Um, Dodge at Trebek clinging on to second, whilst motivational catchers leap up the table into third. Uh, catch in a box. Uh, catch at the Roxbury. More cowball all at two one. Uh, before we drop down to Debbie Dodgers, Dodgy Pumpkins, and Chippin' Balls all at 1-2. And uh, my team's next opponent's Al. So I don't want to say too much, but uh, the only winless team is currently Wild and Crazy Throw. So we know now if they beat us, this is officially my fault. I'm sorry, Captain Poop Deck, that I said that. Um, but yeah, 0-3, uh, Wild and Crazy Throws. You know they're going to win a game at some point. No one goes completely... Right winless during dodgeball because uh, these teams have all got game so let's see uh, let's see what happens uh, as we go into round four because there's some I think there's some interesting matchups um, coming up here and and with everyone being so finely balanced it's still literally anyone's league Al. yeah this is true and uh, what we do we'll find have, out starting tomorrow yeah yeah uh, round four starts tomorrow we do have don't mess it up yeah no no guarantees. Um, we do have a player of the round and a Moneyball award to make, though. Oh, yeah. Uh, MVP is... Um, I mean, there were there were a couple of really great shouts for this one, weren't there? Again, this was... Yeah, quite there were. Decision. There were some really great performances. Um, however, I have to give it to Lady Stacy. Yeah. She had... Four hits, a catch, an 80% win rate. Uh, she won her race. Uh, I mean, she even, I think the only way she was eliminated was she was caught. Like, she won all of her defense. Like, everything that was thrown at her, she, she took, won those games. She took the, the ball. The only way she was eliminated was through catches. That is bonkers and of course she had to make those throws being the last person standing on her team so right you know occupational hazard in that regard yeah so got gotta be gotta be lady stacy yeah congratulations to lady stacy um she had a great round and, and any other round probably could have been on on the winning side with a performance like that al crazy right um 
so congrats to her. Now, um, the Moneyball Award. Moneyball. This one was a tough one. There were a few. Um, however, I am going to give it to Dion Lunsford. Okay. He was a round five pick. He had a hit and a catch and a race win and a 75% win rate. Uh, I mean, he would have been the MVP on his team if it weren't for Seabus giving that perfect performance. Right, yeah, Seabus is 100%. Dion was right there, and, you know, that's for, – for a fifth-round pick, that is a really excellent performance. So I've got to give it to Dion. Yeah, well, congratulations to Dion, uh, Moneyball Award, and uh, let's see – what else happens? Watch this space because I know Dion's uh, constantly doing doing you know well in his commander's league. He's a good player, so I, that might mm -hmm. that might be the catalyst that then sees him step up and start killing like a pro in dodgeball uh, rookie season. So anything can happen. Um, yeah, congratulations to you, Dion. Uh, and that I think, Al, unless you've got anything more, that probably probably wraps it up. Yeah, I think so. I um, we started late, so probably gonna have to wrap up here soon, so I can get some uh, beauty sleep before the next round starts up tomorrow. Yeah, and you don't want Bogart uh, climbing up and telling you it's bedtime with uh, the claws of his paws. So. No, well, he's he's crashed out in his bed right now. He he gave up about a half hour ago. <laughs> Ten p.m. EST start. Too much for Bogart. Yeah, no, he he bit me earlier, he clawed me earlier, and then the show began. So he's like, I'm going to get this in now. You're, you're the one who's an hour late, not me. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, uh, well, I guess that about wraps it up for round three. Uh, welcome to the late Dusto, who's obviously been doing other things more important, which is totally fine. Um, yep. And we'll be back here for round four because there's no uh, stats or you know, traitorous holidays to uh, to appropriate. So uh, we'll see you here next time. It's goodbye from me, and it's goodbye from him. Goodbye.